Okay, this is Kevin with Rushing Services in Winnemucca, Nevada again. Just going to show you a new project that I took on. I, I decided to build a waste oil heater because the last one that you saw was an electric water heater changed to a waste oil heater. I was so successful on that I thought I would try something else. My son-in-law uh, and his brother gave me a wood stove, a uh, real small one because uh, basically I needed a small flame, something that I could control. Either I could have like this inferno or I could have this nice little warm flame. Because I have a shop that's a 12 by 70, not insulated, and Tommy will pan around now and show you what we're talking about. I had no interest in insulating, so I wanted a stove that would uh, heat this little space without running me out. I live in Nevada, it's the high desert. Right now the temperature in the, in the shed itself is about 45 degrees. This morning when I got up it was 25 degrees, uh, and being not insulated. During the winter, in December and January around here, it'll get below zero very easily. So I wanted something that I could control really good without having a giant inferno. So this is what we've got. I took this waste. I took this old wood stove. Well, it's not an old wood stove. It's a, actually a really good, never been used wood stove that was given to me. Come on over here, and you can. And I converted it to a waste oil heater. So what, what you have here, inside you've got your, uh, you have to have a stainless steel bowl. Stainless steel is the only thing that won't melt. I went down and bought an $8 one down at Walmart. Alright, so you start off, you got your bucket up here for your oil feed. I use transmission fluid because my, uh, my son-in-law's dad has a transmission shop. It's free to me. I attached it with quick disconnect so that it's easy to clean up, disconnect, fill up, whatever. With Tigon tubing going down, I've got a, a needle valve. you got to have a needle valve or you won't be able to control the flow. Going down through a Tigon tubing and it'll, I'll show you in a minute, uh, we'll adjust the drip on that. It'll go down, it'll swing into, swing into, it'll flow into this copper tubing which goes straight through. We've got a, got a half inch uh, black pipe T with air coming up. Uh, in the middle and then the or coming up through it and then the copper tubing going through the straight through the middle now to get through the wall I got these little uh, these little uh, what do you call them? flanges that actually you know something that you would build a black iron like a uh, railing or something you can do a lot of different things but mainly you'll see them in railing and stuff I've got one on the outside and one on the inside so I've got a half inch black iron pipe attached here and I also have one attached on the inside I have a fan that I use and it is just a simple little fan, a Coleman fan that you would use to inflate your air mattress. I put it, the, all the insulation is basically for noise, not, not heat. Uh, and then I've also attached a fan to the back just to blow the heat out into the room. And this, you know, again, pellet stove pipe, double walled. 4 inch going up. It's okay to put a 90 in it because you got a forced draft here and it goes out. Now as far as the stove also has some natural draft vents right here and then there's some in the back that come up from the back and on the inside again you can get right in there and you can see that oil drip. Now listen the reason that I have it on the bottom some somebody think you know some guys think that you shouldn't have it touching well it ain't gonna hurt anything because the air is going to keep it cool anyway. Uh, but the air on the outside of that helps keep it from getting uh, coked up. What will happen is it will get slag and stuff built up around it as the oil drips. The air keeps it clean, so you don't have to clean it out as much like I did on my electric uh, water heater conversion. But the reason that that's down on the bottom like that is because that oil needs to drip into one spot. Otherwise, I get splatter and a whole lot of smoke. You get smoke when you get incomplete combustion. There's not enough air to the oil, so it just sits there and smokes. So if you're getting a lot of smoke, that means you don't have enough air. Or at least your air is not distributed right. All right. You can see, again, that flange come in. And I put a 90 just so it could, you know, go into that, that bowl. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to light this baby for you and let you see how we do that. Okay, what we got on our bowl, I, I just cut a real ugly hole right here because I was in a hurry. And it doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it, you don't have to have an airtight hole. It just doesn't matter. So I cut a hole in there. And what I do is I place it in here on this grating. And, and the reason I put the grating in there isn't because it makes it so much better. 
it, it elevated the bowl enough to where I could get it into that hole. Simple as that. You don't have to have it. And then it's a good idea just kind of have that pushed down, you know, and where it's blowing down into the bowl. You may, once you get it lit, you may have to, I have to adjust this a little bit just to get complete combustion. And that's one of the things that I can do with this is a little bit of adjustments on it until I get complete combustion. So I don't use, uh, well, I'll just show you. What I use to light this is I just use some oil-soaked rags. You're going to have lots of those around your shop. Just regular old cloth uh, paper towels. So what you do, you take your paper towel. This is oil soap just because I always have a mess in the shop. You can be grease or anything. It doesn't even have to have anything on it. You toss it in there. Don't light it yet. And I come over here and I start my drip. And I get it going at a pretty good click. It's not the best drip uh, sight glass, but when you're cheap like me, it works. I get a pretty good click going, and I want to let it go for a while because I want this line to fill up, and then I want to get a little oil at the bottom of that pan. Now, once I know that I've got oil at the bottom of the pan, I try to light my lighter that doesn't usually light. And then I give up on that, and I go to a trusty one, but I hope I don't burn my fingers off. Okay, once you get it going, let it take off. Let it get going good before you turn your fan on, or you'll, you know, obviously you'll just blow it out. Um, plus, we want it, it still gives us more time to get oil down in that bowl. And let's see, let me borrow that for a second. Let's see if our drip is dripping really good. You can look down in there and you can see I don't have a whole lot of drip going in there yet. Uh, We'll have to give it some time. But I am getting a drip, so it's building a little reservoir down there. Okay, once, I, that's, once that's going, I, you know, it's going pretty good. You can see it's going pretty good. You close the door up. And I come back here and I turn my fan on. Turn the fan on and let's see what we get here. Nice flame. Now it'll start off you know, with a bang and then it'll settle into a normal flame. It, it, you know, it'll settle into whatever it is that you've got dripping. And again, I can turn that down. I can turn it up. Uh, I've had it pretty darn hot in here. But that's about a good flame right there for what I want. I'll actually turn this oil up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so you can see because I've got, I got plenty of air, all of my oil is being burned. Uh, there's, there's no, you can't see any smoke at all coming out of there. And that's what you want. You don't want, you want that, you don't want too much oil to where it starts to smoke. You want plenty of air in there to make sure all of your oil is burning up and you'll have a nice clear stack like that. No, no smoke, no, you know, cause my neighbors would get real upset with me if I had a lot of black smoke bellowing out of there. All right. All right, there you have it. Nice, nice clear flame. It's settled into a real good flame right nice there. Nice clear flame. I got the door open. I don't have any real residual smoke. And again, if you got that fan going on that, you've got basically you've got a force, you got a force draft with uh, just a little bit of uh, natural draft going in there just to help. But uh, it's heating up real nice. Yeah, we settled into a really, really nice. Is this what I'm saying about being able to control it? I mean, that's. That's nothing. I can turn this into an inferno if I want, but it's like I've got awesome control on this. And one of the reasons that I've got such good control on it is because it's just a real small, real small stove. And uh, a little bit of, a, and the amount of air that you put in there just doesn't really matter that much. I don't adjust the airflow. I adjust the fuel flow. And it doesn't seem to matter from a low amount of fuel to a high amount of fuel. It, it doesn't matter the airflow really too much. That little... Uh, mattress air pump seems to do the trick works great put a little uh 
little rubber hose on the end of it that maybe like radiator hose that can stand a little bit of heat and let her rip. So this is Kevin at Rushing Services showing you my super de duper waste of all right, I was going to say super de dupe. All right, so my son won't let me say well, That's my waste oil heater. Also, uh, just uh, how to clean the glass, because that's kind of important. Easiest thing in the world right here. Easy off. Any oven cleaner, throw it on the glass, let it sit there for a while, come back and uh, tomorrow and wipe it off. That's that, that oil film that's on the glass comes right off. So this is me saying, I hope you enjoy it. Piece of cake, man. The first time I did this, it fired right off, and it's worked great ever since. You don't have to be able to weld. You don't have to be a fantastic uh, do-it-yourselfer. You just got to have some pipe and a drill. Go cut your hole, put it together. There you have it. Waste oil heater for your shop. Talk to you later.